It's 5.06. This is Click Here on CHUO FM 89. My name is Mitchell Kaplan. Modi is Carleton University's French language literary journal. Uh, next Monday, it's going to be holding its the launch for its latest issue at uh, Raw Sugar. Uh, Morgan Faulkner is one of the editors of the magazine, and she joins me on the line from uh, Quebec City. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Mitchell. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Maybe you can give me a, a bit of background on Modi. How did it get started? Absolutely, yeah. So um, it was myself and uh, a master's student at Carleton, Natalie Mize, who started this the school year of 2007-2008 at the time I was finishing up my uh, bachelor's degree at Carleton University. And uh, so basically we saw that in Ottawa and at Carleton in particular, they had like um, on the English side, Inwards Magazine and Bywords and stuff like that. And there seemed to be this, this vibrant little magazine culture. And when we looked into it a little bit in French, there really didn't seem to be much going on. And uh, so that's basically how, how we got started when we saw the, the niche for that. It surprised us that uh, on the French side, there just wasn't, uh, there weren't these little magazines that in English. But in I th- yeah, I think, though, that people would be surprised to know that there was enough of a community to have a French language magazine based out of Carleton University. Yeah, absolutely. That was definitely a challenge of ours uh, from the beginning. And I think one of the things is that we are um, Carleton students who are running it, and we get a lot of support from the the French department at Carleton University, but we've never intended it for it to necessarily be closed on Carleton in terms of our public and our contributors as well. So we've pretty well from the get-go have contributors from just Ottawa in general, and we've always accepted submissions from uh, Canada and internationally as well. And you see if, if you've read the, uh, the, the new issue that's coming out, there's a, there's a lot of um, different parts of the world that are represented in the magazine. So we've had to combat that by, in the beginning, trying to convince uh, basically anyone who we could find who spoke French at Carleton University to write something for us, uh, right. but then also, of course, um, to, uh, I guess, enrich the Francophone, Francophile public at Carleton University and in Ottawa through submissions from other parts of the world as well. What were you looking for in the submissions aside from the fact that they be in French? Uh, Well, we're looking for them to be creative writing and literature, so... Is there a particular style or something, particular bias that you have in terms of what type of literature you're looking for? Uh, I wouldn't say that we've looked for any particular themes or styles or anything like that, except for, you know, we've had some submissions of um, maybe uh, more literary criticism, and uh, we don't want to, we want to sort of uh, uh, distinguish ourselves from, like, uh, more academic uh, literary journals and things like that. So we're definitely more uh, looking towards um, creative writing, and that's not necessarily to include more critical pieces. Like in the current issue, we have... Uh, an essay and as well as a, a review as well, but um, they, the essay, for example, is in a very literary creative writing style. It's not something that you'd submit to like a university academic publication. Well, listen, you've got an excerpt from uh, this uh, new issue that you're going to share with us. So maybe you can set it up for us. For sure, yeah. So I'm going to read an excerpt from uh, Effraction, which is by a uh, short story by Sylvie Gendron. And basically, the title means breaking and entering in English. And uh, the writer is Sylvie Gendron lives in Montreal, where she teaches literature. And uh, the short story is part of a collection of short stories that she's uh, preparing at the moment. So to give a little bit of context on uh, the excerpt that I'm going to read, uh, there's a, the main character, Chloe, arrives uh, at her apartment in Montreal after a weekend teaching meditation in Sherbrooke. And uh, her apartment is a complete mess, and her Siamese cat, Heathcliff, uh, has gone missing, and uh, she's convinced that somebody broke into the apartment, even though there's no sign of anyone having broken in. So basically, you, you start to think while you're reading that Chloe is a bit paranoid, and she's likely imagined parts of her life, like perhaps even the existence of this cat that has gone missing. Um, So in the excerpt that uh, I'm about to read here, which is uh, taken from the middle of the story, the police have just arrived at her apartment to help her check if someone is hiding inside of her bedroom to help her hopefully find her her cat. And uh, so basically in the excerpt, they question and then they kind of play along with uh, the story that um, that she's telling, and, and then they kind of make a spectacle of, of entering the bedroom and everything. So. Okay, okay. Okay, so. Elle le raconta. Elle rentra d'une fin de semaine de méditation à Sherbrooke. Oui, elle vivait seule. 
Oui, elle enseignait la méditation. Elle avait bien verrouillé avant de partir, oui. La porte n'avait pas été forcée, non. Personne n'avait sa clé, surtout pas. Il n'y avait aucune trace d'effraction. Elle ne comprenait pas. C'était une solitaire, une célibataire presque endurcie. Elle vivait seule avec une plante carnivore et un siamois appelé Heathcliff. Drôle de nom pour un chat, s'était exclamé, exclamé le plus loquace. Un héros de roman s'était-elle contentée de répondre, énervée. Heathcliff, euh, elle l'avait presque oublié. Elle ne l'avait pas revu depuis qu'elle est rentrée. On lui avait peut-être fait du mal. Pourquoi tant de haine Son cœur s'emballait, confondait tout, la vie et le roman. Chloé commençait à sentir remonter le chaos. On lui intime... Oh, on lui intima l'ordre de se taire, de se calmer. Le chat était sans doute caché quelque part. Il avait eu peur. Il s'était prostré dans un coin. On le retrouverait. On lui conseilla même de ne pas prendre la chose personnelle. Elle n'était pas certaine d'avoir bien entendu. Et s'écria, « Pas personnel Vous délirez. Je rentre chez moi. Tous mes effets personnels sont sans dessus, dessous. Plusieurs sont cassés, brisés, irrécupérables. On m'a sans doute volé. J'ignore quoi encore ?» Et vous voudrez que je ne prenne pas ça personnel ?» Elle se ressaisit. Elle se souvint qu'elle avait appelé les policiers pour qu'ils ouvrent la porte de sa chambre. « Pouvait-il l'ouvrir ?»« Aucun problème, madame. Nous sommes là pour ça. C'est notre métier, vous savez. »« Vous pensez que quelqu'un pourrait être caché dans la chambre ?»« bon, Je ne crois pas, non. Mais j'ai peur du désordre, du chaos. » Le policier lui demanda de s'éloigner. Il sortit son arme et lança. « Vous devez vous rendre. » Chloé n'en croyait pas ses oreilles, le Far West en plein cœur du quartier Rosemont. Sortez de cette chambre, les mains en l'air. Rien. Aucun bruit, aucun son, pas même un miaulement. Je compte jusqu'à trois. Un, deux, trois. J'ouvre. And I'm going to leave, uh, leave it at that. Okay. Oh, thanks for sharing that with us. So what does the motivation behind, like for people like you and some of the other people that are involved in this magazine who are, you know, from what I can see from the names of the contributors and all that, you're not all francophone. Uh, what, what, what draws you to, to the French language and, and literature? Uh, well, I think for the, the editors, like the three main editors of the magazine, in fact, were, were all Anglophones who studied French at Carleton University and in uh, literature particularly. Natalie Mazet also did some, some linguistics. And so the French language has just always been a, an interest of ours. And myself and Matt Rushton were both uh, uh, New Brunswickers who have Acadian roots as well. So even though English is our first language, we have some Francophone, Canadian Francophone in us as well. So... Um, Yeah, but I guess interest for for Anglophones, uh, I guess openness to um, other languages and cultures, and uh, for us it was also just seeing that this niche was there in Ottawa, that if the actual French community hadn't already um, made, uh, you know, started this this culture of uh, of little magazines in French or whatever, we uh, well we we found a place for ourselves to step in, I guess. So, uh, I mean, where, I mean, how do you see French uh, fitting in with your life? French fitting in with our lives? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for myself personally? Yeah. Uh, well, currently I live in Quebec City and I'm doing my, my PhD in uh, Francophone literature in Africone and, uh, and uh, uh, Literature Martiniquez. So, um, for me, it's, it's very important. Almost all my life is in, is in French right now. And, uh, you know, it's always, I think, because I, I, I'm half Acadian, um, but I lived in an English town growing up, that it's always been uh, kind of this uh, other part of me that I always wanted to discover. And through um, literature and cultural production is, is the, main, uh, the main way that, I, that I've done that. And now, of course, living in Quebec City as well. So, what's, what's next for uh, Modi? Uh, for Modi, well, uh, um, we have the launch coming up, and we're, we're really excited about this particular issue because uh, before this interview, I took out some of the past issues and just really looked at how it has grown um, since 2007. And, you know, looking at the very first one, I think that we printed and photocopied it on a photocopier <laughs> in the Department of French. We hand-stapled it together. In fact, I think the first four are hand-stapled together. And uh, for this issue, although um, I would say since issue number four, we started to get really quite strong and to get uh, contributions from Ottawa writers and not just from our friends that we begged to write something. And, um, but uh, with issue number six, all of a sudden we were just inundated with submissions uh, from all over the world, but also still with a, a good, strong base in Ottawa and also in the rest of Canada. 
Uh, so at this point, we're just uh, really, really happy to see it grow and to be able to uh, put forth a magazine of really strong quality. And uh, so at this point, we're, 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 I guess we're reorganizing a little bit to deal with the greater number of submissions and contributors and everything that we have at this point. So I think that the next time we just hope for the same, uh, the same quality of submissions that we got this time around. Where can people find uh, the magazine? Uh, they'll be able to find it at the French department, um, as well as at the launch party, which will be at Raw Sugar, and we're also going to have uh, copies available at Raw Sugar. And uh, in there will likely be a couple other locations in Ottawa where people can um, pick them up, but we haven't uh, sealed all them down. So for the time being, you can also check out, we have a Facebook page, if you just look for Modi, and uh, Twitter as well. Right, we should just, uh, just, yeah, t- uh, and Twitter, just uh, to, to, to mention to people that it's a play on words, it's Mo, M-O-T-D-I-T, yeah. not, not Modi as in damned. <laughs> as in the damned, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, literally word said, but a play on words, of course. R- right. Uh, been talking to Morgan Faulkner about the launch of Modi, which is happening Monday, 5 to 8 p.m. at Raw Sugar Cafe, 692 Somerset West. Morgan, thanks for uh, talking with us. Thank you so much, Mitchell.